Hi, my name is Alfonso Majorana. I am a filmmaker from Montreal. I have been working in the film industry for over 35 years. I made my career mostly as a camera operator and director of photography on a lot of international and Hollywood films here in Montreal. Currently, I'm working as a director, writer, producer on my own brand new uh, feature documentary on music, and it's entitled Goddess of Slide, which features the incredible life of Ellen McElwain. And this coming off a film that I did back in 2017 that won at Sundance and Hot Dogs and was nominated for an Emmy, and the film is entitled Rumble, the Indians Who Rock the World, which is currently airing on Netflix. You should watch. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say that uh, the bulk of my success and career was as a, as a camera operator here in Montreal and abroad. I've worked on film sets like The Mummy, um, uh, I'm Not There, which is a Todd Haynes film with Kate Blanchett. I worked with Dennis Quaid on a, on a film called, on a TV series called The Art of More, as well as Day After Tomorrow. But um, the, that's probably the best part of working as a camera operator is that you get to work closely to, to directors and a lot of great actors like, like on The Notebook or on uh, Within These Walls with Laura Dern and Ellen Bernstein. All these great uh, films that I worked on as a, as a camera operator really, um, you know, so solidified my 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 uh, my angst as, uh, in the industry, and and, and I was, uh, you know, been proud of the fact that I've been able to to do that job for 35 years, and I think that's one of the things that has allowed me now to to sort of stretch it out and go back to which is to what I want to do, which is direct my own films. First time I ever worked on a film set in Montreal, you know, I, I was hired as a, in the art department and, and, uh, and I remember bringing my ghetto blaster and with some clash and punk music so that I could just get over the day because they had asked me to scrape the, the floors of the studios because we were going to prep, you know, the, the film sets. And I think I did, I did it like two nights in a row. And then I went up to the production manager and said, I want to, I want to be in the camera department. So that was my initiation to, to the film industry in terms of a, 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 you know, a production. At that time, it was a TV series. You know, I wanted to ultimately to direct films, but I wanted to have to go through the DP um, sort of journey. And, uh, and so uh, I started working as a, uh, early on as a PA, but didn't last long because I really wanted to be a, a camera assistant. So in Montreal, um, other than wait to, to do, to get on the big films, when I did get on, I always sort of like asked if I could be a, a, a camera assistant or do a little trainee for free, you know, on a film set. So I, I did a lot of that. And, and in the meantime, I, I shot and directed my own uh, music videos. So that was all in Montreal before I decided to, to take that jump and go to Vancouver. And I attended the, the Vancouver Film School, which I think at that time was, it, was in its second year. And I did that for about eight months or a whole kind of two semesters where you got to shoot uh, your own films. You, I, I was able to, you know, DP a, a short film, uh, shoot a commercial and shoot a documentary. So that was my, my sort of launching uh, pad to film. Yeah, well, so as a, as, a, as a DP and as a filmmaker, you know, I really like to, um, to look at old films because I think at the time when you can watch those films, you can really have, you can really allow your eye to look at all the elements and layers that make up a film. You can... You have time to listen to the music. You have time to, you know, watch the actors act. And then the framing and the lighting, you really have a sense of, like everything seems to slow down when I'm watching films like Touch of Evil, for instance, which was one of my favorite 
all-time films to watch as a DP. Like, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd watch that film once a year. You know, it's, it's a masterpiece in terms of what Orson Welles did in terms of camera work, lighting, sound, and, and music. And it always kind of was my, um, my initial, you know, uh, I was obsessed by that film and it, it, it kind of, you know, allowed me to reflect every time when I would be hired as a DP or as a, even as a camera operator. I always lo looked at some of references, you know, whether it was photography or old films, uh, I thought that that was the, uh, where I could learn a lot, you know. Even films like 400 Blows, you know, Les Quatre Cent Coups of François Truffaut, still today when I watch it, you know, emotionally you get attached and then you don't realize how intricate and how uh, perfect the cinematography is because a, it kind of traps you into watching this film emotionally. And it's not just the acting, it's not just, not just the, the words that are being said. But the cinematography has to do a lot with it as well. You know, it captures all that emotion. So it's kind of important. And I, 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 I you know, whether I, I look at old photographs or I look at, uh, I look at films, uh, I get inspired by, um, by a lot of those uh, old, um, you know, um, experts, I guess, or, you know. Uh, yeah, I remember being on a on a film set in uh, in in Rome, working on a on a, on a, a, C, a TV series for CBS called Blood and Treasure, and we had to um, we had a, a techno crane in the middle of the of the street, and um, it was a night, and it was a very complex kind of scene in a narrow, one of these narrow Roman streets, you know, a night. In Trastevere, which is this great uh, area in, in in Rome, and and we we had to combine, you know, a, a scene of people inside a car, people getting outside of a car, trying to escape, and then meeting meeting, you know, other people that that you know f that instilled fear, as I as I want to say. So I remember. There was this whole idea of how to do it in, in in two or three different setups, and but then we were running out of time. And then I remember playing around with the um, with the uh, with the remote head as I was operating the techno crane. I was and I was talking to the uh, to the um, uh, my techno crane operator, you know, and who's usually my dolly pusher. And I was telling him, oh, bring, can you bring the camera here? And I was just kind of like, while, while things were slowing down, I was just playing with the camera and seeing, oh, what if I, can we stick the camera head right inside the car window and then come out of it and, you know, and then maybe do this in all in one shot. And as I was doing it, the director was seeing that I was kind of like just fooling around and, and he was saying, hey, Alfonso, what are you doing? Show me that again, you know? I said, oh, yeah, maybe maybe we can do this. And so we did. And we did it all in one. So that kind of stuff where, you know, you, the camera's literally literally inside the car. And then with the techno crane, you're allowed to, you can, you can like come out of it and then continue the shot, like wrap around and chase, you know, them. But then they... They they they're running away from you, but then they, you know, the bad guys are coming, and then they start running towards you. So the whole camera shot lived on on its own, and those are the kind of things that are, you know, uh, exciting. You know, as a, as an as an operator, but also as a working alongside the DP and and the, the director at that time to come up with something like that. It it, it it's so exciting. You know, it it makes the storytelling, and you save time, but you've also made a great shot. And you've told a story without setting up, you know, multiple cameras or doing different setups to, to, to tell that story. And those are, the, those are the cool ways to sort of like solve problems, you know, <laughs> sometimes is, is that, you know, and it's exciting. If you want to write scripts, then write scripts. If you want to write, you know, if you want to direct, 
start directing. I think you need this focus on what you want. I think, you know, sometimes people get, oh, you know, I can do this, I can do that, and I can do all of that. You know, well, I think, you know, it's in my my experience, I always wanted to be good at something, you know, not not just okay at everything, you know. And and I delegate, you know, I I, I, I love seeing I, I don't want to go and say I'm a I'm I'm a better editor than that person just because I'm a filmmaker. No, you know, I want I want to work with a real good editor, a real good camera assistant, because that's what they do and they do it well, you know. And and then what I what I do well is is what I want to project as well. So, you know, right now I'm working on my new uh, documentary um, called uh, Goddess of Slide, which is a music doc on, a, on an incredible woman trailblazer, a musician called Ellen Mac McElwain. And, you know, when I, when I first had the idea to do this film, which came off of Rumble, uh, I had an, you know, I was passionate about what the story needed to be. And even though I was refused at the beginning, you know, I, um, I, I kept going because I thought that this story needed to be told. And so, and then to do that, I, I, you need to sort of get a good editor, get a good, you know, get good people to work with you that do what they do really well. And I think, for me, that's the biggest, the biggest, um, the biggest thing I take away from my my career is that I've always wanted to work with the best people and the nicest people because those are the ones that share, you know, their art. Others don't want to, you know. And I'm, I've always been one to like share what I what I know, because I didn't have anyone to open up the doors for me. Like I mean, I, I was born in the East End of Montreal, and nobody was in film except my mom who would show me every single, you know, film on the weekends you know, or, or made me, made me listen to music, but I didn't have anybody to, to look up to or show me the way and to get into the door. You know, there was no, none of that. So I feel privileged that I can do that for others. You know, I, you know, when people call me and they want to come on a film set or they want my opinion for sure. And I'm not, and, and, you know, there's many people that have had much more success as well, you know, uh, than than I have, but I've but I can say that I'm really happy with with the career I've had, and I keep going because I you know for me being in film was to make my own films, and that's what I'm doing now. You know that's what I wanted to do. That's why I studied film. That's why I was in film is is to make a film. So and and you know after this I'm hoping to do a to do a fiction, and which is what I started out to do anyway. So I think that's for the younger generation. I think if you know what you want. There's a lot more, you know, that you have a lot more access to getting to getting there, you know, than, than in the past. But don't forget the people that know know the craft, you know, and don't be shy to, to ask.